Good afternoon, everybody, on Educated Economist Air. So, over the last few weeks, I have uh, put together some articles that I have found talking about the homeless situation taking place in Portland. And I really just get very frustrated when I read some of these articles because most of them, in fact, all of them, deal with the symptoms. None of them. None of them address the real problems and why it is that we have such a crisis situation taking place in Portland. And it's not just Portland. I mean, it's cities all over the nation, but Portland is really bad right now, considering that just a few years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Portland was considered one of the most beautiful cities in the nation. I mean, everybody here in Oregon prided ourselves on having Portland as a place to go to. And we all really enjoyed it. Now, Portland is a really terrible place to go to. It's full of garbage and homeless are running rampant everywhere. And there's crime and just the filth. And it's just disgusting. And again, like, I think, okay, all these people have all these ideas of what the problem is and how to deal with the problem right? I mean, I'm reading articles about how they're wanting to deploy all these bathrooms. Like they put out 153 of these porta potties and most of them got vandalized or complained about until now there's just a handful of these things left. Well, where are these people going to go? Like they're out on the streets and there's no place, right? Take a look at the articles that I leave down in the description. I mean, it's gotten down to the point where there's I think, I, I forget what the article said, is like something like 35 public best restrooms for a homeless to go to in order to, to relieve themselves. And I mean, you think about it, it's just like, if these places are so inconvenient or such, a, how, where are they going to go? They're going to end up going out on the streets or in the bushes. And that's really what ends up happening. So people start complaining about this and they start, you know, obviously not wanting this in their neighborhoods or around them. So what do you do, right? You start complaining about it, but if nobody does anything, then you start to try to deal with the problem yourself. And then that's where the real problems start to kick in because now you got harassments and people like, you know, really getting angry with each other and fights start breaking out. So now there's a proposal that it's going to be a crime to harass the homeless, which I thought to myself, wait a minute, isn't it already a crime to harass people? Why do you have to make one just for homeless people? But apparently if you harass a homeless, they can actually get awarded a thousand dollars for it. So I can only imagine that if this thing actually goes into law, what it would be for people to try and get a thousand dollars just by getting people to harass them. You know, I mean, it's just like there's money to be made everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I doubt that law will actually pass. But still, this is some of the things that these people are thinking about. And, and again, it's just like you're not addressing the real problem, right? You think, okay, well, there's a problem with people harassing the homeless and then you can fine them for it. But again, that's dealing with the symptom and not dealing with the real problem of why do we have so many homeless here? Again, with the porta potties, we deploy all these porta potties because we have so many homeless here. We don't want them defecating on the street, but they're not dealing with the homeless. They're dealing with the problem of the homeless, right? Now, again, maybe we can just get them off the streets, so we'll put them in housing. There's proposal to take millions of dollars, literally millions of dollars, and get people off the street and put them in housing. And I'm thinking, you know, there's people out there right now who are struggling with jobs, trying really hard to make it without assistance from government, and they can't get a house. Yet you're going to take homeless people and taxpayer money, these people's tax money, that they've worked hard to pay you for and you're gonna take and put homeless people in a house and deprive them, depriving the available housing that's out there, making it ever increasingly more expensive and difficult for these hardworking people to get a home, driving them out onto the street, creating even more homeless people. Do you see this, what you're doing here? I mean, this is one of the reasons why I don't get into politics is because everything that is political is a dealing of a symptom and not the real problem. I mean, you think about it. Think about places that used to have a really good standard of living and then went to hell. Think about Detroit, right? Why did Detroit do so well? Because they had an automotive industry, had great standard of living, had good paying jobs, good paying manufacturing jobs of these automobiles and people lived in houses and had a really great life. And then when Detroit started to go under and people started losing their manufacturing jobs and all these cars that they used to build weren't getting built there anymore, not like they once were, then what ends up happening? People start going into poverty and start failing. Right? This doesn't, it doesn't, 
necessarily have to be the entire nation. It can be cities. It can be a, just an individual person in their house, right? When the new money turns off, people start falling into poverty. When new money comes in, it drives people into luxuries. When you drive into luxuries, you have a separation between the rich and the poor. So now, all the new money that is coming into Portland has the people, the property owners, the people who bought these homes, living in this area, having their businesses, they want to enjoy that higher standard of living wherever it was that they brought this money from. Did they sell a home in LA or New York or Seattle or something like that and move out to Portland and buy a home that was half the price and now they have all this money to spend and they're dumping it into the city wanting the conveniences and the pleasures of life that they once enjoyed. And as they're doing this, they're driving up the prices and it's making it ever increasingly harder for the standard of living for an average job to achieve that standard of living. And so what ends up happening is they fall off the, fall off the available you know, capabilities of being able to provide for themselves. And they're out on the streets. Even with a job, they still can't make it. And so now you're working real hard and you can't even make it and people are stealing your stuff and you end up losing your job. And now you're stuck out on the streets because no matter what you do, trying to get back into an apartment is an incredibly difficult task because it's so expensive now, right? Only the rich people get to live here. Everybody else gets to suffer and you get to see it happen in real time right now. The more the new money pours in, you think about it, it's Portland. Ships come up here and stop in port, right? That is a lot of transactions and things happening there. Yeah, sure, it's a corridor, it's a hub, and it goes out on rails and ship in trucks and everything else but you have to think like where the new money comes in first and what happens to that particular area when the new money comes in right it drives ever increasing amounts of people into luxuries and it drives people ever or it drives that wedge in between the the rich and the poor and it makes the inequality ever increasing and you can see it just plain as day right now i mean here even in astoria Right? Astoria used to be a working class town. It was a working town. We had loggers and fishermen and that's the what it was here. Right? And living here was fairly easy. I mean, my wife and I, when we graduated high school with just regular part-time jobs that went full-time when we graduated, we were able to rent an apartment and have a living and do everything on our own. You know, And nowadays, I can't imagine somebody trying to do that. It's hard enough to do it, you know, with good established jobs, let alone trying to do it straight out of high school. So the area here has definitely changed from demographics. It's not necessarily the working class people, the logging and the fishermen, right? The loggers and fishermen. It's now a lot of retired folks, people working remotely. And they come to our town here and they started driving up the real estate market and now the homes here are incredibly expensive. And the people who have average jobs here, they have a very difficult time trying to make ends meet. They certainly don't have the capabilities of buying a house, not like these other you know, retired folks are having here. And then, so what ends up happening? A lot of these people are leaving town, right? And so now all these folks come to me and they're like, how come nobody here wants to work? And it's like, it's not that they don't want to work, it's just that they're not here anymore, right? The cost of living, the standard of living is very expensive. The houses are very expensive and the pay doesn't pay enough. So now they're leaving. They're out of here. And this is what we're going to find, you know. This area right here is starting to experience. It's gentrification, you know. It totally happens. And when the new money turns off, like I can't imagine Astoria having the new money turn off because it's all from this retirement, you know, community that's being built. So I would imagine that new money is going to pour in for a while so long as the retirements are, are paying. But it used to come from fishing and logging. It doesn't necessarily come from that anymore. And when we saw the fishing and logging start to deteriorate as far as being the main money driver coming into the town, the town was, you know, it was cheap. It was easy. It wasn't like it was diving into poverty, but it wasn't like exactly excelling, right? Then people started moving in and this is what we had 10, 15 years later. Now look at it. People look around here and they don't even realize we moved. We didn't even move here. We grew up here. And all of a sudden now it's a rich town. Like it's a it's an expensive place to live. Like when did that happen? You know? I didn't even know it took place. All right. Just wanted to talk a little bit more about that homeless thing. There is so much more to discuss about this, but you know, all these articles, you think about it, every single one of them is all about dealing with the symptoms. Never do they ever talk about the real problems. And the real problem is when new money comes in, right? The people who have access to that money 
They move into luxuries and it starts driving the price up of everything. And the people at the end of the line, they suffer the most of it because their wages haven't increased, but their standard or the cost of living has. And that's really what's taken place here. And you can find examples of it all over the nation. You can find it throughout history. You know, and it's happening now. It's probably happening in your town. All right. Uneducated economists, you let me know.